Here's a video about modeling periodic data. This is going to be imitating the style that they have in the book. We came up with some different ideas, um, at least this year, uh, that I'm recording this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do it the book's way and just make a couple comments about other things that we did. And I'm, I am going to add something in um, to what the book did, which is try to think about the badness of the fit. So this is adapted from problem one in the book. Um, but I just modified it a little bit. We've got some x values, 0 to 14, y values, 3.1 to 2.5, and we like to model these. And we don't have any particular physical reason to choose parameters like the period is some known value or something like that, as often happens. So we're just going to go straight from the data, okay? And so um, one thing we can do is on the calculator, remember the way you put in the stat plot is first you go to stat and edit and then that gives you the ability to put in, and I put them in L1 and L2, and if, please do that if you, unless there's some really good reason you want the other lists to be operative. Um, and then you can go to second y equals, which is stat plot. Press enter to get uh, that on. Make sure it's turned on, which is what these guys, the toggle buttons are about. Make sure it's just the dots, because we're actually going to connect the dots in a more interesting way with the sine curve, as opposed to just straight lines. And make sure these are L1 and L2. Okay. And then if you go to graph, you get your your data plotted. Okay, so that's a picture of this data. Now we need we want to model this with either a sine or a cosine function, and um, they often ask for a cosine curve. So we want y equals a cosine bx plus c plus d to model this thing. Although, to be honest, when we're actually fitting curves from data it makes a lot more sense to write it with this parenthesis way. So I'm going to actually write it that way. Okay. So what's the, there's a few things we could do first, but probably the one I do first is the center line. This is what most of the groups came up with in class, and that was just take D equals the average of max and min. There's other possibilities, but that's not a bad one. And so we just take uh, 3.1 plus a minus 0.1, well, minus 1.1 rather, over 2. And so that's going to be 2 over 2 is 1. Okay, so that happens to be a simple number. All right, so there's our center line. Uh, y equals 1 is going to be the, the center line, so the, that's our d value. Uh, the amplitude, if we're trusting the max and min to be the guides for everything, which is a little dubious because those there might be some error in those numbers, or we might not want it to be too sensitive to that. But if we're trusting that, then our amplitude, it makes sense to take just half the difference between the max and min, which is nicely symmetrical to what we did here. Here was half the sum, now it's going to be half the difference. So now it's minus a minus. Okay, And so that's going to be 4.2 over 2. And so that's going to be 2.1. OK. And that is going to be the absolute value of A. Now remember, that could mean we could use a positive cosine or a negative cosine here. It's really up to us. We're probably going to use a positive cosine unless we absolutely have to use something else. OK. So let's just go assume for now that we're going to just use A equals 2.1 and not negative 2.1. OK. Now um, the period. This is something where we had a real a reason in class to choose the period as 12 months because it was yearly variation. Here, we don't even know what this data measures, so it's kind of a weird thing to do. But um, what we can see is that we, we know the distance between two maxima. We also know the distance between a maximum and a minimum, or at least of the data. We're not sure if those are really the maximum and minimum of the function between those points, but this is all we have to go on. The suggestion that the book uses, and I'll go ahead and run with, is look at max and min take the x distance between those and then double it because that's just half a period. Okay, So let's look at that. Let's look at the data. The max is at x equals 0. The min is at x equals 6. And so we're going to assume the period is going to be 12. p equals 2 times 6 equals 12. Now that's not very certain that that's the best best answer but it's maybe the best we can we can do. Okay, And so we know that 2 pi over uh, b is 12. And so b is 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. Oh, surprise, surprise. That's the answer we had before. Okay, But that's kind of a coincidence. Okay, so we're going to use pi over 6 there. 
and then the shift, the phase shift. Okay. Well, we have to remember what function we're using. We're deciding to use a cosine and a positive cosine at that, because we'd use this with positive. And so the anchor point that we need to identify is the maximum. Okay. So the anchor is the maximum. Luckily, the maximum is right at the origin. I probably should have shifted this one. This is it's too simple. Okay. But the main thing is you look for the anchor point and here for a positive cosine it's going to be the maximum. And so the phase shift this C is going to go in as um, that x value. Okay. So we're ready to go. We've got 2.1 cosine of pi over 6 x minus, and unfortunately this is a little too simple, the minus here. I forgot that this first example was too simple, um, which is pretty common. Plus 1. So remember that the plus 1 was the center line. The 0 was the phase shift because the anchor point, the maximum we found, if you look at this picture, it's at x equals 0. The pi over 6 was from looking at the period, and the 2.1 was from looking at the amplitude. Okay, so we can actually plug that in into the calculator. Let's do y equals. So we got 2.1 cosine of oops, pi over 6 x, and then there's no shift, plus 1. And it's looking not too bad. Okay, it's a little different, especially towards the end here. Okay. Um, but it's really not, not too bad. This is a pretty good cosine fit. Okay. Now, one of the things I didn't talk about in class is that the calculator actually has a one button solution for this kind of thing. Okay. So if you go to uh, math, um, where is it? Oh, no, I'm forgetting where it is. No, no, stat. Sorry, stat calc. There we go. Stat calc, it has all these reg, these are regressions. These are ways of modeling, fitting functions. Ooh, sin, sine, the sine function. So sine regression means, fancy way of saying, fit a sine function to your data. And if you do sine reg of L1, which is uh, second one, and L2, ooh, I think I need a comma, actually, comma, L2, then that exactly says use the L1 list as the x values, the, the L2 list as the y values, and fit a sine curve. Now that's not going to be exactly what we got. It's using a different method and it's using a sine curve. But let's see what, what it got. It got D is very close to 1. It got C is 1.55. Now that's very different from ours, but that's because they need to shift it because they were using a sine curve. And that's very close to uh, pi over 2, so that might be relevant. The B they got is 0 0.503. That's pretty close to pi over 6. And the A they got is 2.05, which is pretty close to 2.1. So they've got their own sort of secret method, which we don't need to worry about um, the details of, for fig figuring out what they think is the best sine curve. And we've got our own method. And they came out pretty close because the cosine and sine are shifted from each other. Okay. So the last thing is evaluate the badness of fit. And the proposal we came up with this year was um, badness was the average of the relative errors. Not the only measure, but a, not a bad not a bad measure. okay. So what you're going to want to do there, I don't want to make this video last too long. The method is just going to be evaluate your uh, y of x, the model function, this guy, at x equals 0 to etc. for this one. Just put in all the x values. Okay. And then calculate the relative errors. You can do that as a percentage if you want and then average them up over all the data points. Okay. And I'd like you to calculate that. So to remind ourselves that there's this nice way of actually sort of evaluating wh what's going on. Is this good? Is this bad? Just to get a single number. And so that's um, one thing I'm going to have you do in the homework. But I don't want to make this video way too long.